I'm gonna show you three places where you can stay warm in the backcountry and get a better night's sleep. What's going on guys, John Kelly here today and today I wanna to talk to you about staying warm when it's cold outside. What do you do when you know that it could be near freezing or sub freezing temperatures? You want a backpack, but you're scared that you won't be able to sleep warm at night. We're going to talk about that today, but before we get into it, just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And when you get a chance, hit that notification bell right down here so that you can find out anytime one of these videos are dropped. And if you find value in the video itself, give me that good old thumbs up. So I know that you liked it. I'm going to show you three places where you can stay warm in the backcountry and get a better night's sleep. The first place where you can protect yourself when you're trying to get a good night's sleep in the woods is in your sleep system. And specifically, I'm talking about your top quilt or sleeping bag and your sleeping pad or under quilt. If you're using a hammock, you're probably using an under quilt unless you have a double layered hammock and then you'd be using a sleeping pad. The first thing you need to understand is your top quilt or your sleeping bag. What is the temperature rating? And you need to know, is that temperature rating a comfort rating or a survival rating? That's hugely important because a lot of times when you see mass produced sleeping bags, they'll give you a temperature rating of say 15 degrees. But when you investigate further, you find out that that's the survival rating. In other words, at 15 degrees, you won't die, but you will be freaking cold all night long. You need to understand what the comfort rating is of the sleeping bag or quilt that you use. I actually did a review on a sleeping bag not too long ago that was a 15 degree sleeping bag. And I can tell you at 15 degrees, it's not the warmest sleeping bag, but at 30, you're in pretty good shape, but it's temperature rated for 15 degrees. But when you do some investigation, you find out that is a survival rating. On the opposite end of the spectrum, with UGQ quilts and lightened equipment and others, they actually give you the comfort rating of their quilts and sleeping bags. What that allows you to do is to know that if it's 15 degrees out and it says it's a 15 degree quilt, I will have no problem staying toasty warm. Just a few weeks ago, I was in Grayson Highlands down in Virginia and I brought my UGQ 40 degree under quilt and unbeknownst to me, it dropped down into the low 30s that night, but I slept toasty warm because it's a temperature rating that is a comfort rating, not a survival rating. Basically what that gives you is confidence that the sleeping bag or quilt that you're using is actually going to keep you warm when the weather gets cold. When that temperature drops, you don't have to be afraid of whether or not you're gonna stay warm inside of that sleeping bag or quilt. Now, if you're a beginner to backpacking, one of the things that you may not realize is that when you sleep in a sleeping bag, everything that's under your back is not insulating you at all. It doesn't matter if it's a zero degree sleeping bag. If you're laying on the back part of the sleeping bag, you're compressing all of the down or any insulation that's in it. And it immediately causes that insulation not to do anything because the insulation uses the space in between the feathers or whatever the insulation is to be a barrier between you and the colder elements. And that's what keeps you warm. But the moment you flatten that stuff out, you get rid of all of the insulative qualities of that. So whatever's behind your back is of no use to you. That's why a sleeping pad or an under quilt are so important to keep you warm in cold weather. When we're talking about sleeping pads, one of the, the key things that you need to know is something called R value. R value is basically the resistance value of the sleeping pad. In other words, how much does it resist the cold that's coming up from the ground? How much is it protecting you from that cold? And so you, you've got these R value things from usually around two is the lowest, which is little to no insulation whatsoever, up to 5.5, which is really a warm sleeping pad. You want to know this because in the summertime, you don't want a heavily insulated sleeping pad because you're not necessarily wanting to sleep super warm when it's hot outside. At the same time, when it's cold out, you want that R value up higher so that it keeps your underside nice and toasty. Because if, you're, if your top side is nice and warm, but your back and your butt are freezing, you're not going to get a good night's sleep. So understanding R value is very important. 
For me, I use the Nemo Tensor Insulated. It's a 20 degree sleeping pad and it does a great job keeping me warm when it's cold outside. I used it for the entire Shiltoe Trace and I've used it for several other backpacking trips when I've slept in a tent and it's done a fantastic job. If we're talking about under quilts, you're then again looking at your temperature rating. And as we talked about before, you wanna make sure that's a comfort rating, not a survival rating. There is nothing worse than getting a cold butt when you go to sleep at night and waking up not being very comfortable. So you wanna make sure you find an under quilt and that you secure it properly so that there's no drafts getting between your hammock and your under quilt. You wanna make sure that that under quilt has the right temperature rating so that you're staying warm inside of your quilt. Not only that, uh, you wanna make sure that you don't have too warm of a sleeping bag for the summer or too cold of one for the winter. So knowing that temperature rating on your under quilt is vital if you want to stay warm when it gets cold outside. So as you can see, when you've got your, your top end and your lower end both dialed in, you should be able to sleep really warm in the winter time. Your layering system is also very important when it comes to staying warm in cold weather. Some of the things that you can do to keep yourself warmer, if you're somebody who just sleeps cold, a lot of people wear socks when they go to bed at night. Uh, this is one thing for some people that just keeps them warm when they sleep at night. I know people who sleep with socks on all year long. I'm not one of those people. I rarely sleep with socks on in a tent or in a hammock, but I know a lot of people, that's one of the things that they have to do to stay warm. I know a lot of people who uh, they wear tights when they're sleeping at night, something to cover over their legs to keep them warm. I personally, I've slept with, with a hoodie on at night or a puffy jacket just to keep myself warm inside of my tent or my hammock. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't use a sleeping bag that covers over your head at night and you use a quilt, you're probably gonna want some kind of a knitted hat or a down hat or something like that to wear on your head when it's cold outside to keep you warm. Also, having some kind of an insulated pillow or a puffy jacket that's in a ball or something behind your head will also help a ton to keep your head warm when you're out in those cold temperatures. The third thing that you've really gotta pay attention to when you're in the backcountry and you're just trying to stay warm at night is understanding where you're going to camp. Everybody loves that pristine campsite where you've got the fire ring, you've got the opening to the amazing view with a lake or stream or a creek or a, a pond right there next to you. Those are great when the weather's not as cold, but when it gets cold outside being near water means there's more moisture in the air. And more moisture in the air in cold weather means colder temperatures and colder sleeping at night. So a lot of times those pristine campsites aren't always the best ones when it's freezing cold out. You don't always wanna be down there in those campsites. And a lot of times those are also down in valleys. And if you're in areas like the Red River Gorge, the further you go down into the gorge, the cooler the temperatures become. So camping out in these lower areas will actually cause the temperature to drop and cause you to be in a colder area to sleep in at night. So it's really important to understand that where you camp is very important. Another place that isn't always the best place to camp in cold weather is on a ridge, especially if there's a lot of wind because there is nothing to block it a lot of times. If there aren't a lot of trees and you're just up on top of a ridge or a cliff face or something like that, you're talking a lot of wind coming through and that wind just makes it that much colder. Although it's a beautiful view and a beautiful thing to see, it can make it even colder for you when you're trying to sleep at night. If you're strictly worried about staying warm, the best places that you can camp at night are places with heavy tree coverage, where a lot of wind can't get through, where you're not right on top of water because you don't have the moisture in the air and you don't have that wind whistling through that's gonna make you colder when you're trying to sleep at night because we all know if you wanna hit miles during the day, you need to get sleep at night. And so that can really affect the temperature of where you are when you're trying to sleep. And finally, the fourth tip, and this one's for hammock campers. It's understanding the direction to set up your hammock. Now, if you're a hammock camper, uh, you probably use a hex tarp or some kind of a tarp that has an opening on either end. That's most people using hammocks. And so when the wind comes through, it's really gonna come through that opening and you're gonna feel that breeze at night. And there are several ways to defend against the wind coming through your hammock when you set it up. One, use a different kind of tarp. 
Uh, I use a Winter Dream tarp from UGQ that has doors on either side. I can set up pretty much in any direction and I'm gonna be okay when it comes to drafts. But if you're using a tarp that doesn't have doors, you've got a better opportunity for drafts and breezes to come blowing through your tarp, causing it to be more chilly. But if you don't have that, you don't have doors on your hammock, how do you stay warm when those breezes are coming through the trees or coming through that ridge area? How do you stay warm? The best way to defend against breezes coming through your tarp is to make sure you set up with the broad side of your hammock facing the wind. A simple way to get started with that is to understand which direction is north and which direction is south because most wind is blowing west to east. So if it's blowing from west to east, you typically will want to set up your tent going north to south. That doesn't mean there aren't winds coming from the north or winds coming from the south at times. There are those things and you'll be able to figure that out. But make sure you know which way the wind is coming from and make sure that the broad side of your hammock is facing that wind. Your tarp can then defend against that wind actually getting into your hammock and freezing you out in the middle of the night. And I can promise you, you can have the warmest under quilt and top quilt in the world when you're in a hammock, but if that wind comes through the right way, it's gonna be chilly. So make sure you understand where the wind is coming from and find some trees that allow you to set up against the wind as opposed to through the wind. So there's a few easy ways that you can fight against sleeping cold when you're out in the back country. And if you found any value in this video whatsoever, make sure you give me that thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment below. What do you do to stay warm when the weather just drops the temperature out from below you? You can also follow my adventures on Instagram right up here. Go there and check out different pictures when I go on trips. Also, you'll find out updates on there about the Backpacking Podcast with myself and Jeremiah Stringer. And until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I'll catch you on the next go around. Let's do that whole thing over again because that was just not good. There are three places where you can save yourself. You can save yourself? I'm talking about three things, two things, two, just two. I'm not even talking about three things. What in the world is going on today? I can't even talk. Man, I'm dying here. I can't even talk today. Sleeping back, okay. Let's do it again. And I took my 40 degree UGQ, ha, UGQ, I can't talk again. Why do I suck at talking? I should be good at this by now. Knitted hat or something like that. Do that again. Let's do that again. I couldn't say against this, against this. Another way you can defend against, against that. I can't say against. Why can't I say against? I can't even talk. That the bl 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 make sure the bleh is the bleh when you're blaying in the bleh bleh. And just tell me, yeah.